first take the first stanza, go through that and see each stanza. There I would like to concentrate on not only the meaning, but also the study of the vocabulary, pronunciation and the grammar. My heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my sense as though of hemlock I had drunk or emptied some dull opiate to the drains, one minute passed and leafy words had sunk. It is not through envy of thy happy lot, but being too happy in thine happiness, that thou light winged dried of the trees in some melodious plot of beech and green and shadows numberless, singest of summer in full-throated ease. My heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my sense. Aches, pains, same meaning. My heart aches, but here it is intransitive. My heart is the subject, aches is the verb. Whereas in the other one, and a drowsy numbness pains my sense. There it is functioning as transitive. It pains me, my sense. So keep that in mind. An intransitive verb doesn't take an object. A transitive verb takes an object. And here in both cases, my heart aches. And a drowsy numbness pains. That is, if the subject is third person singular, the verb in its present also takes singular form, pains and aches. What have I done? In one line, I have given you two, three grammatical points. And this knowledge enhances our appreciation of literature. My heart aches. Why am I talking about this singularity? The poet is talking about his loneliness. There is no one with him. He has already lost his brother. He is feeling all alone. This becomes important later in the last stanza. So that is why I am bringing in grammar to enhance your understanding of the poem. My heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my sense. But what has created this numbness? As though of hemlock I had drunk. Hemlock is a poisonous plant. Socrates was given this poison and he died. As though of hemlock I had drunk, or emptied some dull, dull opiate to the drains. Opiate is a drug made of opium. One minute passed and Lethe words had sunk. Lethe is uh, a river, the water of which will make you forget everything. This comes in Greek and Roman literature. This is Lethe, the name of a river. That is why it is capital L E T H E. Lethe words had sunk. It is not th through envy of the happy lot. Don't think I am unhappy because you are happy. Don't think I am envious. He is talking to Nightingale. But look at this. So far, he has not mentioned uh, Nightingale. He started about his loneliness. He started about his pain. He started about his drowsy numbness. Now he thinks of envy. That means he is contrasting his situation with the happy situation of Nightingale. Right? It is not through envy of the happy, light, happy lot, but being too happy in thine happiness. Actually, it is, if you want to say thy happiness is correct, it is, is written in such a way, but being too happy in happiness which is thine. So he put thine in front. Thine means you are, yours. Thy is you are, thine is yours. Thou is singular you. Thy singular you are. The singular you used in object position. I want you to come. I want thee to come, that kind of thing. And thine is equal to our yours. 
So, do not try to use these words in your essays, it is no longer used. This is older forms. Is not through envy of thy happy lot, but being too happy in thine happiness. There is an interesting thing with two. Two is a lot. Also, it has a slight pinch of over, too much. Your happiness is so much, and I am also too happy. I am very happy, but if you give extra meaning, there is some problem coming up because of contrast, because I am miserable, my heart aches, and a drowsy numbness pains my sense. That thou, what is that happiness about? That thou, light winged dryad of the trees, dryad is spirit. Greeks believed every tree had a spirit, some supernatural element. But in this case here, dried means a spirit which lives among the trees, because the nightingale lives among the trees. So, dried of the trees in some melodious plot of beech and green, some pasture land where you have a lot of trees and shadows numberless sing a summer in full throated ease. What are you doing? You have trees surrounding you, shrubs, pastures, green lands and you are on the tree singing in full throated ease, full throated ease, you are enjoying. So, in the first stanza, he introduced himself, he introduced the happiness of nightingale and the song of nightingale. Have you noticed it? Is it clear now to everyone? Oh, for a draught of vintage that hath been cooled a long age in the deep delved earth, tasting of flora on the country green, dance, Provencal song and sunburnt mirth. Draught is a small drink which you take in one gulp, not drink of water. In this case, he is thinking of wine. Vintage is a kind of wine of high quality. What is that high quality? He shows it. See, many people, they make champagne. Champagne is also one type of wine they put it in the parts of earth, they open the earth and close it. Oh, for a draught of vintage that hath been cooled long age, for quite some time it has been cooled, where? In the deep delved earth, they, they, they make big uh, holes and put it and close down the uh, holes. Tasting of flora, flora is originally goddess of flowers, but here it means flowers tasting a flora and the country green, dance and Provencal song and sunburnt mirth. Look at this, he wants to now thinking of having beautiful wine and enjoying the beauties of flowers and green country. Mirth, mirth is merriment, happiness and sunburnt, that is it is not of winter, winter is very bad because you have to put on lots of clothes and also be careful about uh, frost and uh, snow. Oh, for a beaker full of warm, full of the warm south. Now, look at this. The desire is for warmth. I told you in the beginning, he was advised to go to Italy because England is very harsh, especially it is winter. So, he is choosing, he, is, he prefers to go for warm places. So, warm south, Greece, Italy, Spain, these are warmer than England, France, Germany, Scandinavian countries, I mean just very close to the North Pole. Full of the true, the blushful, hypocrine with beaded bubbles winking at the brim, while first reading I deliberately read it as bedded, but is also read, uh, is said as beaded like beads, well be uh, bubbles like beads beaded bubbles winking at the bream and purple stained mouth. Hippocrene is a fountain on a mountain, poets like the drink from that fountain. 
because when you drink that water, you become a good poet, that kind of, when you drink that liquid, you become a good poet. So he is he's thinking of a beaker full of warm south, full of the true, the blushful hippocrine, with beaded bubbles winking at the brim and purple stained mouth. When you drink such, drink from hippocrine and all that, yeah, the bubbles will be there or your lips may become purple. When you drink, uh, the, the, uh, the lips reflect the color of the drink. Now what is he asking? That I may drink either that vintage or a beaker full of warm south, the blushful hippocrine, that I may drink and leave the world unseen and with thee fade away into the forest dim. I want to just fade away with you, disappear from here and go with you into the forest dim. Dim is very dark. Why is the forest very dim? Not only in the night, even during daytime, because all the trees are so close to one another, you do not get much light. So, it is a dark forest. I would like to go with you either with the help of uh, wine or hippocrine. And look at this. With thee fade away. See, he has an interesting thing. Look at the first and the last line. Singest of summer in full throated ease. The throat is open, not saying, do, do you like to come? Would you like to come? That is full throated, someone who talks like me. Next line, that is first line of the second stanza, for a draft of vintage. Draft is an amount of drink which you can gulp in, just which you can take in within one gulp. If you want to take good amount, you are not going to say, you say, ah, full throated. You open your mouth and drink it. So, last line of the first stanza talks of full throat. First line of the second stanza also talks of the full throat gulp, uh, gulping of the vintage. This is something called unity. A poem may be split into several stanzas. Each stanza leads you to the next stanza. The full throated ease is leading you to draught of vintage. If it is sipping wine, no full throat. When I was talking about the unity of a poem, I said the last line of the first stanza leads you to the first line of the second stanza. Now, look at the last line of the second stanza and first line of the third stanza. The last line of the second stanza says, and with thee fade away into the forest dim. And the third stanza starts, fade far away, fade, fade. So, that is how the unity is there. All the, I told you, teaching a poem is to teach grammar, vocabulary and pronunciation. Fade far away, dissolve and quite forget. There is an interesting thing here, quite forget does not say totally forget. I told you that willing suspension of disbelief, you do forget, but somewhere a little bit of you remember the other things. Quite forget what thou amongst the leaves hast never known. Forget what? Forget certain things which you sitting in the leaves and singing beautifully full, full throated ease would not never know. Because our problems they do not have. Marriage, family, doctors, promotions, jobs, without, they do not have. Uh, tuberculosis, whatever it is. Fade far away, dissolve and quite forget 
what thou among the leaves hast never known. What are those things you have never known? The weariness. Weariness is being tired. The fever. He is referring to specific fevers. The tubercular fever, other fevers. And the fret. Fret is irritation, anger, vexation. You get tired of everything, so you fret. The weariness, the fever and the fret here, where men sit and hear each other groan. Two, three people come together, no, 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 I am suffering, no, 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 I am suffering, no, 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 my daughter-in-law creates more problems, no, 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 my daughter-in-law creates more problems. They are going on groaning. Whereas, you just enjoy your song, full-throated song. I mean, what is it I want to forget? Here, this place, what is happening here? Where palsy shakes a few sad last grey hairs. What does grey hair stand for? Old age. Hmm? In old age, some people get partial paralysis. The hand goes on shaking. That is what he refers to. Palsy is paralysis. Where palsy shakes a few sad last grey hairs. That is, they have lost lots of hair. A few hairs are there, char, 10 or 20, all totally grey. Might be at that time, kids were, I mean, didn't know how people, even the last few grey hairs, they die. Might be at kids' time, greying was not there, I don't know. But he is referring to old people. Where youth grows pale and spectre thin and dies. His own brother died. When you are pale, what does it mean? Your hemoglobin is less. You are very weak. Your blood is not rich. And very soon you became so thin like some skeleton or something. And finally die off. This happens under consumption. That is tuberculosis. That is what his brother died of. So, where the old people shake, the young people grow pale, spectre thin and die. Where, but to think is to be full of sorrow and leaden eyed despairs. Our own life here, unlike your life in the leaves, our life here is full of despair. We start thinking, we only have full of, we are full of sorrow. Our thinking is full of sorrow. Where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes, today's beautiful eyes, tomorrow's not very beautiful eyes. With age, with ailments, illness, we lose our luster. Our new love pine at them beyond tomorrow. Where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes, our new love pine, pine, upon, pine at them beyond tomorrow. A new friendship. They miss new friends, but after a couple of days, they forget. That is what happens. The new love, not old love. So, this is what happens in life. Our life, here. But in your case, light winged dried of the trees in some melodious plot of beech and green and shadows numberless singest of summer in full throated ease. That is your state. Whereas, we groan. We complain against each other or complain to each other about our other people. Look at this. Our new love pine at them beyond tomorrow. What is beyond? A distance, quite a distance beyond the horizon. Now, look at the first line of the fourth stanza, which is also linked with the second stanza, last line, as well as the first line of the uh, third stanza. Beyond tomorrow, and away is also like beyond distance. So, he starts away, away, for I will fly to thee. He has already said. I want to fade far away and dissolve. What for? 
for I will fly to thee. Can he fly? No. His body will remain here. His mental, imaginative body is flying. It is a kind of double. In films we see how the body comes out in faint things, faint light. Away, away, for I will fly to thee. But how? Not charioted by Bacchus and his parts. Bacchus in uh, Roman and Greek literature is god of wine. And his pods, what is a pod? Is a leopard. See, in their literature, uh, this Bacchus is shown as god of wine and his chariot is drawn by leopards. And how symbolic, huh? if you drink too much, you will behave like a wild animal. That is the symbol. All these gods and goddesses are created in western literature or any literature very symbolically. If you get drunk, you will be like a wild animal. So, you should avoid that. That is the whole idea. Anyway, away, away, for I will fly to thee. How? Not charioted by Bacchus and his parts, but on the viewless wings of poesy. Viewless means invisible. Poetry has no wings, but poetry will take me to you. That is, he is creating poetry as his aeroplane, as his satellite, as his Sputnik. Poetry will take you up imagination. But on the viewless wings of poesy, though the dull brain perplexes and retards, our brain does not let you fly up, but I will do it with the help of poetry. The dull brain perplexes, confuses and retards, pulls you back. Though it does it, the, the, the uh, physical brain does that problem, but this imagination gives me in invisible wings of poetry. He said, away, away, for I will fly to thee. Now he says, already with thee. Now he is imagining he is with the nightingale. He is with the nightingale. Tender is the night. Tender is the night. It is not harsh, very soft, very tender. Tender is the night. And happily the queen moon is on her throne. In our literature, uh, moon is male. Here it is female. In western literature, moon is female. In western literature, Venus is female. In Indian literature, Venus is Shukra is male, is a planet. Shukra is a Shukracharya. So, Chandrudu, Chandra with 27 wives. What are, who are these wives? Stars. So, highly symbolic. Moon surrounded by 27 stars. So, surrounding things are given a status of wives and the main fellow is given the status of man, male status. Otherwise, western literature moon is female and interestingly in our astrology both moon and Venus are called three grahas. So, in our astrology they are female, but in our literature they are male. Clustered around by her starry phase, phase means fairies, so, I mean those stars, those 27 stars. But here, what is that here? He is not talking about the place where human beings are living. He is already with the nightingale in the forest, which is dim. He says already with thee. He is already with the nightingale. So, where is light? It is dim forest. He says, but here there is no light. Is a dim, is a moonlit night, but where he is, there is no light because surrounded by shrubs and trees. Why has he come here? To enjoy the music of nightingale. Here there is no light, save. What is save? Not protect here. Save means accept. Save means accept, E X C A P T. 
save what from heaven here heaven means sky save what from heaven is with the breezes blown through verdurous glooms and winding mossy ways winding mossy ways what is happening when you are under a tree there is no light but when there is breeze the branches are moving you will get some light now and then you sit under a tree when the branches move because of the wind you get some light he is referring to that light except that light otherwise we don't have light save what from heaven is with the breezes blown light is not blown by breezes the leaves are blown and you get that light that is how a poet makes it beautiful breezes blown through verdurous glooms verdurous means green vegetation lots of leaves and uh, leaves of the branches etc and winding mossy ways mossy is small plants on the ground and that is moss mossy ways is the path which is covered by covered in moss